welcome doctors now let's talk about another topic that is liver failure now actually what does it mean liver failure means when liver lost his function when liver lost his functions that is liver failure and what is the main functions of the liver the main functions of the liver are the that it's involved in the drugs metabolism what are the main functions of the liver that is drug metabolism that is fat metabolism making lots of making lots of coagulation factors and it also helps in removal of toxins from the body now liver failure means whenever the liver function is lost that is liver failure and what are the main functions of the liver that is drug metabolism fat metabolism making a lot of coagulation factors and the most important function is the removal of toxins from the body mainly ammonia nh3 now what are the types of liver failure so there are three types of liver failure that is acute liver failure it is chronic liver failure and acute on chronic liver failure so there are three types of liver failure that is acute liver failure chronic liver failure and acute on chronic liver failure now in this lecture we will be more looking for acute liver failure now now there is another two terms that is mentioned in the book that is fulminant hepatitis and some fulminant hepatitis now now the first is what what actually acute liver failure means how will you define the acute liver failure so the basic definition for it that is whenever there is hepatic encephalopathy occur hepatic encephalopathy whenever hepatic encephalopathy occur within 6 month of initial diagnosis so what is acute liver failure acute liver failure means whenever hepatic encephalopathy occur within 6 month of initial diagnosing it means that whenever disease start in the liver from that period of time till the hepatic encephalopathy and within a 6 month that will be acute liver failure if hepatic encephalopathy occur after 6 month of initial diagnosing that is chronic liver failure now actually what does hepatic encephalopathy means hepatic encephalopathy encephalopathy means that your liver is damaged to such a extent that it is now able to damage your brain so that's the hepatic encephalopathy now what is the definition that is hepatic encephalopathy occur within a 6 month of initial diagnosis okay now there are two terms that is fulminant hepatitis and subfulminant hepatitis fulminant hepatitis mean whenever hepatic encephalopath encephalopathy occur within two week of initial diagnosis and subfulminant hepatitis mean whenever hepatic encephalopathy occur within three month of initial diagnosis that is so fulminant hepatitis so ful fulminant hepatitis means whenever hepata hepata hepatic encephalopathy occur within a two week of initial diagnosis and so fulminant hepatitis means whenever hepatic encephalopathy occur within three month of initial diagnosing that's very important now let's talk about the causes of acute liver failure so how you can learn the and how you can uh, recall all those causes for the acute liver failure that is a mnemonic for it that is a b c d e and f so a stand for the aceto aminophen aceto aminophen or autoimmune hepatitis and autoimmune hepatitis and hepatitis a 
where B stands for hepatitis B, C stands for cryptogenic, and hepatitis C. That is hepatitis C. Where D stands for the hepatitis D, E stands for hepatitis E, and entero diseases. That is like Wilson diseases where F, F stand for fatty changes of micro vesicular type. So A stand for acetoaminophil. Acetoaminophil is simply Panadol but the two or three tablets of these acetaminophen it cannot lead to acute liver failure students if um, in mostly in suicidal attempts mostly patient take acetaminophen or panadol uh, at the same time they take even 15 to 20 tablets F uh, mostly it is being seen in the uh, suicidal attempts if a patient taken 15 to 20 panadol at the same time so in that condition the patient will be likely suffering from the acute liver failure so and another a stands for autoimmune hepatitis and hepatitis A and hepatitis B, cryptogenic hepatitis C, hepatitis D, hepatitis E and fatty changes of microvesicular type. So that's all the major causes for the acute liver failure. Now what is in the morphology you will see in acute liver failure. So in the morphology, let me raise this causes of acute liver failure. Now, what is the end? What we, you will we see in the morphology? By looking upon the morphology of acute liver failure, there is very important term that is mesohepatic necrosis. There will be mesohepatic necrosis with liver. You will find that liver will be small, shrunken. And why it is so? Due to the loss of parenchyma. So, this is very important that in the morphology of acute liver failure, there will be mesohepatic necrosis. And oftenly, by looking upon the liver, the liver will be too small, shrunken due to the loss of parenchyma. As it is acute liver failure, it means that it is not associated with the, yes, it is not associated with the scarring and fibrosis and inflammation and that kind of thing is you know that scarring repeatedly episodes of scarring and fibrosis they are more concerned they are more associated with the chronic liver failure so acute in the morphology of acute liver failure you will found a mesohepatic necrosis along with that liver will be small shrunken due to loss of parenchyma and there is no association of the scarring and fibrosis now coming to the clinical features so students, if a patient is suffering from the acute liver failure, the patient will be likely suffering from the general symptoms like there will be uh, nausea, there will be vomiting and along with that there will be jaundice as well. Now this is very important that if, uh, if you talk about the profile of the transaminase level. So in the acute liver failure, if we see the serum transaminase level, so at the beginning phase, the serum transaminase level serum trans aminases level it is increased even up to thousand and why it is so because due to the liver get enlarged and it get there is edema occur in the liver but after two to three weeks this liver it become uh, shrunken it become small so and uh, due to necrosis so in that condition the serum trans aminase level it is further get decreases so don't forget this profile of the serum transaminase level and the acute liver failure. 
So in the condition of the acute liver failure, what will be the profile of the serum transaminase? Yes, initially at the beginning of the phase, there the serum transaminase level will be increases because of a lot of, uh, uh, because the liver get enlarged due to edema. So at that condition, serum transaminase level get increases. But after even two to three weeks, you will found that the serum transaminase level, it get further decreases. And that's why it is so, because of the further necrosis occur in the liver, liver get further, it gets shrunken. So that's the reason that after that the serum transaminate, transaminate level, it get decreases. So don't forget this uh, point. This is very important. Now, coming to the main clinical features, if there are four or five major clinical features regarding with the acute liver failure. So if a patient suffering from acute liver failure, they will, they will almost, it will be suffering from the jundus. And why the jundus occur? due to the retention of the bilirubin. Bilirubin, it is not basically metabolized when it get not metabolized in the liver. So that bilirubin, it will, it is circulated in the blood and it is deposited in various tissues like it deposited in the skin and the sclera and lead to the yellow coloration. So in the jundus, you will, as you know that, in the, uh, that is the yellow here, the yellowish coloration of skin and sclera and why it is so that's because of the retention of the bilirubin bilirubin is not metabolized thus they are circulated in the blood and accumulated in the skin and sclera now coming toward the hepatic encephalopathy as i told you f f uh, earlier actually what is hepatic encephalopathy hepatic encephalopathy means that your liver is damaged to such an extent that it is now damaged your brain now as you know that i told you earlier the one of the most important function of the liver that is the removal of toxins okay and which sort of toxins mainly ammonia nh3 now, just imagine if the liver, if there is pathology occur in the liver, it means liver is not working properly. So if liver is not working properly, it is unable to remove various toxins from the body. So there are, the toxin is not, uh, you can say, they are not removed from the, they not removed from the body, it get accumulated in the blood. Once it get accumulated in the blood, it reach to the brain, it will reach to the CNS, and ultimately it will damage your brain. So that's the main point of the hepatic encephalopathy. Now, if a patient is suffering from hepatic encephalopathy, how the patient will be look like? So, when you see the patient, there will be some sort of like behavioral changes to the patients. Okay, point number one. And the point number one, there will be behavior changes. There will be even confusion, coma, and ultimately patient can lead to the death. Additional point, the main important point is that along with the behavioral changes, there are neurological defects also associated with the patients. Like there will be rigidity, there will be hyperreflexia. But one of the most important thing that I would love to mention that is esterexis. That is esterexis. Now, when a patient is suffering from a stage of hepatic encephalopathy, the mostly likely characteristic of the uh, uh, feature that is esterexis. Now, actually, an esterexis, what actually patient will be lo look like? Okay, and the patient, you will ask the patient to do uh, dorsiflex your arms, like say, say, sorry, say uh, I'm a patient, so I will extend my, uh, I will extend my wrist like this fashion, okay? Like say I, I, I'm a patient, I will ask the patient to do like this. That is the dorsiflexion, or I would say that is the extension of the wrist. So there will be doctors, they will be stand in front of the patient, doctors will push uh, these arms further upward, like in this fashion. So whenever the doctors push this arm further like this, so the patient's arm will be like this. So there will be some sort of movements that is look like this. So when I, if I am a patient, I will be sitting like I will be standing like this. I will extend my arms like this, and there will be push movement toward the arms, and there will be this sort of movement. And this sort of movement is called jer that is called jerking movement, and it is also that is actually esterexis. So esterexis means whenever there is flipping tremors occur. That is uh, esterexis also called flipping tremors. Now this is the most important feature that is associated with the and the, it is seen in the acute liver failure. 
And this S2Rex, it is also um, associated with the Wilson disease. So what is S2Rex is when there is a flapping of tremors, that is S2Rex. And a lot of some other uh, uh, features like rigidity, hyperreflexia, and a lot of that, okay? Now let's talk about the coagulopathy. Coagulopathy means the one of the most important function of the liver is to making a lot of coagulation factors. Now see if the liver is not working properly, it means that they are not able to make a lot of coagulation factors. Meaning the coagulation factors, it get decreases in the body. When they, their formation get decreases in the body, ultimately there will be a lot of bleeding, there will be a lot of bruises appear on the skin on the various sites. So that's main uh, feature that is associated with the coagulopathy. Now let's talk about the portal hypertension. Portal hypertension it is more associated with the chronic liver failure it is more associated with the chronic liver failure uh, we will discuss this portal hypertension in the in the upcoming lecture of the chronic liver failure and there is hepatorenal syndrome Whenever liver is not working properly, if there is liver pathology, it means there will be electrolyte imbalance occur in the body. Whenever the electrolyte imbalance occur, it means that the blood supply ultimately to the kidney that is reaching there, ultimately the blood supply will be decreases to the kidney. Whenever the blood supply to the kidney get decreases, there is a, some special system activated. That system is called renin angiotensin system. When renin angiotensin system activated as a result of this there is vasoconstriction occur whenever there is a vasoconstriction occur so what happens that there will be a renal syndrome develop due to this feature so that is hepatorenal syndrome so don't forget the four or five clinical feature you should be these clinical features should be a, should be your fingertips that is jaundice hepatic encephalopathy that is coagulopathy and that is portal hypertension and that is hepatorenal syndrome students so that's all about the clinical features of the acute liver failure so i hope you will get the lecture thank you so much